China is it again back and this time it's a company Minimax. Minimax has been known for making video models. This is their large language model LLM. Minimax M2 is the latest open source release from the company Minimax and it is licensed under MIT. I mean, I can't believe that China keeps on open sourcing and it's like fortune that keeps on giving. I mean, it's unbelievable the amount of open source models that we have got from China when you compare it with the rest of the world. It's almost like a race here, but for good. So this is a new model, Minimax M2. This new Minimax M2 model is a huge model. It's a 229 billion parameter model, but they are humbly calling it a mini model. I don't know what is going to be the max model, but this model has been built primarily for coding energetic workflows. Models benchmark is quite stunning. If you see across all the benchmarks, the model is doing very well, but you can see that like this is a fairly good open source model and the model ranks top in terms of open source models in artificial analysis benchmark. And in terms of the paid models and the proprietary models and all the other models, this model is somewhere in top five. So this is an MOE model. It has got 230 billion parameters totally and 10 billion active parameters. So that makes the model really good. So computationally efficient for you to run it. And the model is also very good with tool usage, which is very important for you to do any agentic related task and it can easily run. I mean, you can easily deploy it with low latency and then run it. I think the most important thing about this particular model is despite having a 230 billion parameters total size, their activation size is like 10 billion parameter. And that is very important because this helps the model to do agentic task with faster feedback cycles and you can run it concurrently, like more concurrency and also primarily like, you know, it, you can have like very simple capacity planning. So for every request, it's going to take less amount of uh, memory. And that also means like a lower latency. So I guess for agentic task, this is like a sweet spot that they've achieved here. While the model is good on benchmarks, when you compare it with the DeepSeq V3.2, GLM 4.6, and all the other open source models, and also proprietary models, top flagship models, what this particular model, Minimax M2, prides on is the rate, this is the trade off between cost and also intelligence and speed. So if you compare this model, so in terms of intelligence versus price, this model is at a very good sweet spot. Like you would see very less amount of models in that particular bracket, like Grok 4 fast. DeepSeq V3.0, the experimental model. And this model is somewhere there where you don't have to spend, like you can see the X axis is reversed here for some reason. So this is at a sweet spot where you don't have to spend a lot of money for, for you to get a quality intelligence on the artificial uh, analysis intelligence index. Also more importantly, like I said, for agentic task, you need the models to be faster. You can't let the models to be thinking for a very long time. Like how Gemini 2.5 Pro does. So you need a model that is faster, that is cheap, but uh, you know, the model has got decent intelligence capability and this model hits a very good sweet spot there as well. And when you compare this model with certain agentic benchmarks, like for example, um, uh, terminal usage or, you know, like a programming task, the model is good, but the model is the best in terms of cost. If you can see here, the model has got like really, really good cost. And you can see how the model has been preferred over uh, other models. Like for example, when you compare this model and DeepSeq V3.2, the DeepSeq V, this model has been preferred 71.4 percentage of times. And the model is much, much cheaper. Uh, if you compare it, like when you compare it with the DeepSeq V3.2, it's just like 10 cents more than or 15 cents more than DeepSeq V3.2. So this is a model that you would want to use if you are trying to use agentic task. If you want low latency, if you want low cost, and then probably in an interface like Claude code, this model could actually replace Claude 4.5 Sonnet and any other anthropic models. So the way you can access the model is you can go to their platform and then minimax.io and then start using the model. I think they're going to give you free pro access for quite a while. My only gripe here is that it's very hard to test this model because the interface that they've given you is an agentic interface. It's got scaffolding behind it. So whatever you ask as a request, it's going to go through a scaffolding agentic system and then you are going to get a response back. So it's not directly the LLM knowledge that you are testing. It's just like much beyond that. But still, like I just like asked a very famous question that uh, people have been asking LLMs and uh, design a, an SVG of an Xbox controller. And here I've got the SVG. The SVG is, uh, I would say like disappointing. Uh, I mean, it has got a couple of things correct, uh, but you, I mean, I don't know, like <laughs> why would an Xbox controller will have a stone, like, is it like Flintstones Xbox? I don't know. So this was a slightly disappointing, but there are a couple of things that people have created in the past. You can go see there, which is like uh, websites, um, web app applications. Those are all stunning. Like one demo that you can see here is 
somebody asked her to create a virtual museum like this is only the prompt experience the british museum from anywhere and this is what it has created it's it's very good to see in one prompt it can do all the deep research it can do everything and uh, user had to just do continue a couple of times and then give some answer and then you have got this amazing website start the virtual tour whatever you want to see start the tour um, you want to see a rosetta stone i think i've seen the second thing that i actually liked here is that the the aesthetics the taste of this model when it designs front end applications i feel it is much better than the regular gradient that we have been seeing with all the cloud codes of the world um any any just llm that you take and ask it to design it has got this very boring gradient i feel like this model is doing much better than that i don't know if it is the llm the training in itself or it is the agentic scaffolding that's where like i can't differentiate between the two things but you can see the the ui is good like you know you have got a honestly like a stunning ui i would love this ui i would um, i would even pay for this kind of a ui and that ui is available and you can just go chat with the model i'm going to click a new task and when you want to chat with the model you have got two options you have got lightning and you have got pro pro right now is limited time free but i think over over a period of time they are not going to let you use it lightning is like the lightning fast one uh, surprisingly their benchmarks don't differentiate between these two it just simply says what the model is and then they are going to show the model so you can see minimax m2 and minimax m2 so they're not differentiating between those two modes and also we don't know if those two modes are a difference in the llm itself or it is just simply the um, augmentation the tools that are available within the llm but you can do lot more than just uh, writing code you can do re deep research you can create ppts you can uh, create uh, you know multimodal applications you can do all those things within their interface i would strongly encourage you to go try out this model very surprised that this model came from minimax which is a company known primarily for uh, let's say video generation and image generation models and they 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 are quite good there like they've got a lot of good models there there is a huge fan base for minimax and now minimax has got an llm that seems to be really good for agentic coding related task i don't know what to make out of all these companies trying to make agentic coding related models but you know i mean as a programmer i would love to have good models for agentic and coding related task let me know what you think about this particular model if you have tried it or if there is any other new model that you want me to take a look at see you in another video happy prompting